Yo, you guys, this is Blacklist of the Abyss, and you're watching my review for my team romantic comedy snafu, aka Origairu, season 2, episode 12. Okay, and this episode has Hikigaya talking with Haruno, and Haruno is surprised that Hikigaya was actually able to get Yukino to tell him what course she was going to go into, which happened in the previous episode, episode 11. Um, and she. And the the uh, she ends up saying that Yukino trusts him more now than she used to, and Yuki guy says like it's probably not really trust or anything like that, you know. And and Haruno actually responds saying, you know what, you're right, it's probably not trust. It's probably something much more cruel than that, okay. And which I I would I would assume to mean romantic feelings, it's attraction, because the reason why it's cruel is because um, it's like. Someone is going to get hurt here. Like, well, I, I would have maybe Haruno's been hurt in the past. And maybe that's why she's saying oh, it's cruel. Because it makes sense for Hikigai to say that. Because he has been hurt before. You know? And it makes sense for her to say that the situation itself is cruel, which I'll get into later. All right? Um, but I, I, maybe Haruno's been hurt before for her to consider love to be something cruel. Because, or maybe she's just saying in general, love can be cruel. Not so much that it always is, but. It can be cruel, and has the potential to be cruel. Okay, um, but she also ends up saying that nothing has changed between them because they still don't understand each other really at all. And Yukino thinks that it's okay for things to stay like that when it's really not. I think like she's saying Yukino thinks that they understand each other better when in reality they still don't understand each other that much at all. So you know, it's under the impression that the situ that their current situation is actually okay and it's fine, but it's really not. And Harno's saying, no, it's not okay. All right, and she hates how naive Yukino is. Uh, she actually says like that. <laughs> she actually says it's one of the things she hates about her. Okay, and then she goes and tells Hiki Guy that his real thing doesn't exist. Okay, so she then tells Ikigaya that the thing that you're searching for, like, you think that you've got this situation figured out. You think you've got your relationships with these people figured out, but you don't. But you don't. And this thing that you're after, this real thing, doesn't exist. You're never going to be able to get that because the relationships you have with these people are not the type where that kind of thing is possible. Okay. And that was uh, one of the f uh, few serious points in the episode at the beginning and at the end we get serious stuff. But in the middle, it's all it's all comedy. It was a great comedy too. This stuff was hilarious. Hickey Gaia walking with Yui over to the club room was hilarious. Hickey Gaia in the club room with Yui Rohai and Yukino. That was hilarious too. I talked about that a little bit of that in my episode ten review. It was, it was hilarious. Um, then you've got Yumiko showing up, Saki, Ebina. There was some funny stuff there too. I mean, uh, Tabana. <laughs> I'm a Nala, man. This dude saw Yoha walk into the room and he's like, okay, he's gonna be fine. But then he saw <laughs> then he saw freaking Yukino and, and uh, Yui and, and Hikigaya walk in and he's like, oh god. Like because he still remembers how much he got wrecked before. He still remembers how badly he got shut down. So he so he sees them coming in and he's like, oh god no. Alright, so that was funny. That was funny. Okay, and then we see um we see Kaori talking with Hiki Gaia and that got everyone's attention because I don't think I think Hayama is the only person there that legitimately knows about Hiki Gaia confessing to Kaori back in middle school. So when Kaori all of a sudden says, Did I ever give you chocolate for Valentine's Day? That catches everyone's attention because they're like, wait a second, what? <laughs> like what what kind of relationship did you two have exactly? You know, so that catches everyone's attention, which which was hilarious. But of course, Haruno has to try and one up that and say, hey Hey, Hayato, didn't didn't Yukino give you chocolate once before? And of course that catches Yukio's attention and the Roha and everyone, especially with the whole rumor from the last episode that they were dating. So that catches people's attention too, and Hayama was actually really good at shutting that down, saying, Oh yeah, that's right, a long time ago when she gave chocolate to you too. Yeah, that yeah, I remember that. Which everybody who knows Yukino knows that she doesn't like Haruno at all. So for Yukino to give Haruno chocolate, that must have been a long freaking time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm going to do a good job in shutting that down. But you could tell, like, it was interesting, because I don't know if you guys caught this. But Yukino, when, when Haruno said that, Yukino glimpsed over at Hikigaya to see what his reaction to it was. Okay, so that so that so that's, that's a little sign that Yukino is legitimately starting to care about what Hiki thinks of her. Alright, so that, that was good too. Alright, but eventually Shizuka shows up. 
Okay, and oh, and by the way, the point of all this is they're trying to get Hayama to accept Valentine's Day chocolate, but he do he never accepts Valentine's Day chocolate. So the only way to get him to do it is to put him in a situation where it's natural for him to accept it and it doesn't feel like an official thing. So the thing they decided to do is like this cooking, baking lesson slash taste testing session. Okay, so they have Ikigaya and and uh, Tobe and Hayato and you know all these people taste testing the chocolate psycha the guys <laughs> pretty much they have the uh, all the guys except for Sai Sai what's this freaking dude's name the guy with Chunin Bio well whatever that dude okay <laughs> the, every every guy in the series pretty much except for him okay uh, they have them there to taste test and that's the background for this okay. And um, Shizuka ends up showing up after a decent amount of it is, has finished. Um, and she tells Sikigaya that him, Yui, and Yukino, all of them are the type of people that don't really get things. Like, they don't get nearly as many things as most other people would, especially in specific situations. Okay, but she does tell him, you know, Hiki, you have, you have gotten better. You actually are being, you actually are growing as a person and you're being better... You are better capable now of actually understanding people than you were in the past. So there is some growth going on there. Okay. Now, later, Hikigaya ends up trying some chocolate that Yui and Yukino made. Again, funny, because Yui's not a not good at baking at all. It's hilarious because they're always mad. They're always just, they're always just messing with it because <laughs> I swear, but when, when it comes to Yui, they have no chill. No chum at all, I swear. It's it's ridiculous, man. <laughs> you know, what happened was that at first Yui was Yui was the one giving Hickey Guy the chocolate, right? So Hickey was like you know, he was prepared for the worst because he knows that she can't cook. Right? And you can assist yeah, I can see you preparing for the worst, but don't worry, I helped her. Right? It turned it, 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 it went well. <laughs> Hickey Guy just breathed this huge sigh of relief, like <laughs> good. And then Yui, Yui's like, wait a second, I think he just said something really mean there. You know, and Yui is great. Yui's great because she, she doesn't get, like, angry at every little thing. She's like, <laughs> she actually has a sense of humor. She, like, she she can laugh at herself, kind of. It's, it's. I mean, it's not really laughing at yourself, but she doesn't get angry at every little thing, you know. She, you know, it's, it's just great. Yui is just great, all right. Uh, but, of course, Haruno wants to come in and ruin everything. Okay, of course. You know, every, seriously, every single time something good is happening, Haruno is the one that shows up to put an end to it. Seriously, it's like that's her goal in life, to ruin to ruin all that is great. Okay. But she ends up asking Hikigai, you know, is, is that the real thing that you wanted? And she's, I, I would assume, referring to him being able to enjoy himself with both Yui and Yukino. Um, and she says that it'd be boring if that's what he wanted, so I'm, I would assume she's saying that it would be boring if you're trying to get a harem ending here, and you, what you should do is <laughs> actually choose choose one of them. So, um, she's, that, she's trying to get him to choose, which will mean that someone gets hurt, obviously, um, but that's usually how things have to go, so, yeah. And Hickey realizes this, but he ends up saying, you know, Harno, Harno always makes him think about the things that he doesn't actually want to think about, okay? Um, and he likes things the way they are because he doesn't want to commit. Because he, the last time he tried to commit, he got hurt, right? So, and you remember that speech he had about hating nice girls, and he's, give, he's given up on falling in love. He doesn't think that it's possible. He thinks that it, it might look good at first, but it's going to end it in the end. <laughs> in the end, it's not going to work out. So he's given up on, on love. And remember what I said before about it being cruel, all right, and repulsive, okay? Um, that's what it is to Hikigaya, because that's what, that's all he's experienced before. He hasn't experienced the beauty of love, you know? So, um, it's, so in that way as well, it's something Hikigaya doesn't want to think about, because one, he actually has to figure out who to choose, and two, because he doesn't want to choose, because if he does choose, then that means he's just going to end up hurt in the end, okay? Now, Harno ends up going on and saying that she doesn't like the current Yukino, which is a messed up thing to say because she's grown so much, obviously. Um, but their mom is the same way, and I mentioned this in uh, the, uh, a couple episode reviews ago. 
Okay, their mom is the same way. The two of them do not like how Yukino is changing. And they're trying to change her back. But, it, you know, it begs the question, who exactly is Yukino, really? Like, which, what is the what is the real Yukino? And who decides who that is? You know, like, what, what is the real her? You know, because they... Is it the Yukino that Haruno and their mom want her to be? Or is it the one that she's becoming? You know, which, which is which is truly real, and that goes back to the real thing. You know, because look at the look at the episode title. Okay, look at the episode title. The thing he seeks is out of reach, and he continues to mistake what's real. The real thing is out of reach, and he continues to mistake what's real. He think he might think of one thing as the real thing, but as Harno says, it's not the real thing. But at the same time, what's real? You know, is is this real? Is this the real her? Is that the real her? You know. So some questions. The episode was mostly comedy, but there were some questions raised in the end. So overall, I'll give the episode an eight point five or a nine. Like I'm on the border here. I'm on the border. You know, what? screw it, nine out of ten. Because the middle part was really freaking funny. A really funny, great comedy there. So you know what? I will give it a nine out of ten. All right. It's episode twelve gets a nine out of ten, and that's that, you guys. Rate, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at BlacklistOTA. And I'll see you guys next time.